This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Yikes. Alright, that was very intimidating. I was on my way back home. The cries of the Higarashi accentuated the already lonely evening. More time had passed than I'd thought. Uh-oh, are you gonna get home by nightfall? The orange of the dusky Sai was being chased down, little by little, by an indigo color approaching from the east. Exhausted from the slow climb towards Hinamizawa, without even noticing, I'd gotten off my bicycle and was pushing it uphill. Genuinely easier to push the bike up the hill than to ride the bike up the hill. I don't understand any of this. No one had told me to my face that I'd done something wrong. No. In fact, it might have been much easier on me that way. What happened yesterday really was just my curiosity. Ooh, very quiet music. It really was no more than a quiet prank. No more than having the courage to cross at a red light as long as you did it with other people. The storehouse for ritual implements, hallowed ground, only accessible to the family of the priest. For sure I'd seen terrifying things that I would never have imagined would be there. Thinking on it now, though, it didn't matter what was stored away inside. It didn't make the wrong I had committed any more right. What the four of us did, Mion seemed to know about it. For some reason, even the police were trying to learn what the four of us did. Did we do... something so bad? Really. It doesn't matter how wrong it was. I did something wrong. It was nothing more than that, and yet... I couldn't accept it. I didn't accept... Uh, I didn't apologize to Mion or Oisi. All I did was shield myself with ambiguities. I told you not to do that! I did something wrong yesterday. I set foot into the Forbidden Storehouse for a little bit of mischief. I'll forget everything I saw in there. I won't ever do something like that again, either. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If I apologize like that, would they forgive me? The suddenly cool evening air left no room for such sentiment, however, as it mercilessly chilled my feet, urging me to head home as soon as possible. In the end, the evening air was correct. If I trudged along such an isolated road, regrets would pile on top of regrets, but nothing would change. Let's go home. I'll go home, go to my room, put on my favorite music or something, and go to bed. That might sound plain and boring, but it's probably the strongest I felt all day. <sighs> Now that I've made a decision, there's no point in dawdling in a place like this. I sat back on my bike. I pushed hard on the pedals. I rapidly advanced forward. I steadily gained speed. The wind was cutting and mercilessly cold, but it actually felt good, as if it were softly punishing me. It's June. Is it that cold at, in the evening? Mom's gonna be mad that we're late! I didn't eat much dinner before excusing myself early and returning to my bedroom. My mom called me from downstairs. Keiichi? Denwayo! Sonozaki-san kara! Sonozaki? Was it Mion? No, it was Shion. I just remembered. She'd had something she wanted to tell me today. Uisi-san had interrupted us, so she didn't get the chance. Shion had said she'd call tonight. Mozumoshi, Shion ka? Domo, kyo wa sai nan de shita ne? She said it so plainly that I got a bit annoyed. She was the one who left me there and ran. Well, he, he offered to buy me a drink, so... He asked you two questions. <laughs> I can't believe she passed it off like that! She looks just like Mion, and yet inside, she's this different. I think Mion would do the same thing. I got a little irritated at myself when I realized I was, somewhere in my mind, hoping for the same reaction I would get from Mion, even though she's a different person. <laughs> Shion laughed refreshingly. When I heard her voice, I realized that she wasn't really that angry or anything. It was just as she said. The cause of my temper was because it was my own fault for not leaving immediately. I'm sorry, not all of us hate the police as much as you do, Shion. I'll stop blaming it on others. Blaming it on others would be... Uh, 
Shion lowered her voice suddenly, as if she was glancing around. I had no idea what I could already know. Oh, is it that the, there's a third Sonic movie being made? She seemed to take my stupid sounding question as evidence. However, her voice didn't sound disappointed or exasperated in the slightest. My entire body jolted as I was assailed by a terrible feeling. Is Shion going to ask the same thing? <laughs> if Shion asks us if I saw Shion last night. She didn't beat around the bush. Whether or not I wanted to admit it, that was the actual honest truth, and I couldn't act like it hadn't happened. みんなで歩いて石段のあたりで私たちみんな別れましたよね高野さんたちは沢に行って圭ちゃんはその場に残って私は親類の人たちのところに行っちゃってああそれがどうした私から <笑> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't surprised. This is the third time I've been asked this question today. Why? Why? What the hell was going on? My shabby response betrayed how scared and small I felt now, after everything that had happened today. Shion didn't say anything for a few moments. Just as I was beginning to think I'd really put my foot in my mouth with that response, she finally answered me. Now that we knew our answers matched, she let out a sigh that sounded more relieved than anything else. They died, right? I, both of them died. Okay. Whoa, oh. Oh, she was the one who burned to death. What? Did he cause throw it out again? Late last night, a police car on its way back from festival security duty had discovered Tomotake-san lying in the middle of the road heading towards Okinomiya. He had clawed out his throat and died. Yep, same thing! But this time, instead of just disappearing, Takano actually died herself. Ooh, this music. Ew. Yep. Don't try that at home. Well, you're not trying hard enough. He hated trimming his nails. He never did it. I realized I was yelling too loudly, so I lowered the force I was putting into my voice. His parents are like, What are you talking about with that girl? <laughs> I didn't want my parents to hear me, so I switched to the cordless phone and ran up to my own room. Okay, well... I was thinking... Takano was going to be the one to, like, kill people. But apparently she died, so maybe that theory is out the window now. <laughs> so there's someone else? Was it Grover? It could have been Grover. <laughs> Who would commit suicide by self-immolation? That's got to be one of the dumbest and most painful ways to commit suicide. 
Takano-san's body was found in the mountains of the Gifu Prefecture. How the heck did it get in the mountains? Employees at a rest stop nearby have reported to the police late that night that they could see flames in the mountains. Did she jump in a volcano? The firefighters dispatched there were the first ones to find her. An autopsy concluded that it was the burned corpse of a half-naked female. They initially considered the body beyond recognition, but directly after, there was a request for a dental comparison from the redacted prefectural police station in Okinomiya, and the results concluded that it was Mio Takano. The cause of death wasn't confirmed, but it was highly likely to have been a homicide, since she was in her undergarments and her clothes were nowhere in the area. Oh, well that's messed up. So she was stripped and tossed into a volcano. This music's amazing for the tone. After the two of us rattled on at each other, there was a silence as we paused to catch our breaths. And as we calmed our nerves, right then I understood what Shion's story actually meant. Shion wanted to see it with me. I just went along with her. I tried to say that, but I fell silent. Nothing would come of me blaming others. Yeah, I agreed. She was definitely very creepy, but... Yeah. Uh, she did not deserve to be, like, stripped into her underwear and then burned alive. That's a horrible thing. <laughs> I, I couldn't... Yeah, it didn't matter how much everyone else encouraged me. I could have put my foot down. I lost to my own half-assed sense of adventure and agreed to go in with them. Yes, it was my fault and no one else's. Shion, <laughs> Shion's words were probably her true feelings. She knew she could get in trouble if she were caught, but that was the thrill of this little adventure. It was the same for me. It was already plenty strange, seeing as how Tomotake-san and Takano-san died like that. Given all that, what could possibly be stranger? That's true! It's supposed to be you find one corpse, but the other one just disappears, which is what happened in Chapter 1. They didn't do a good job of uh, putting it in the swamp this time. そんなのは大した問題じゃないだろう。いいえ、ケイちゃん。I don't understand why, but when I said that, I felt my spine freeze. Shion, like me, was obviously getting the same feeling crawling down her back. Shion didn't answer. I couldn't say anything more than that either. A chill crept in through my clothes and tried to wrap it into a fist around my heart, cold hands feeling about on my chest. <laughs> Neither of us could say anything. Tomotake-san opened the lock and he died. Takano-san exposed the ritual storehouse and she died. If two more people were to be sacrificed... Then they would be... None other than the ones who entered with them. None other than us. <laughs> I wanted so much for her to pass this off as a joke, even now. That, though, was such an incredibly difficult and selfish request. Oh, hey! Dippy's playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. That's a fun time. 
if Tomotake Sana and Takano san had died in a common way like a car accident, I could tell myself it was a coincidence. Instead, he clawed out his own throat, and she burned to death, drowned in oil in the mountains. These two deaths were so out of the ordinary that I couldn't possibly dismiss it as mere coincidence. It was as if, in exchange for sneaking into the ritual storehouse, there must be someone punishing us, some sort of cruel will working behind the scenes. Even so, I still didn't want to accept that terrifying truth. If I did, then I would have to acknowledge that a horrible crisis was growing for, near for Shion and I. So this is basically kind of chapter one if Mion had an identical twin. Is that the only difference? Is this literally just chapter one, but in this timeline, she happens to have a twin? It seems to be making all the difference. That's why I argued against it. I argued knowing I was running away. I could get behind that choice. They're not going to exactly advertise that. Oh no! Mio's using her Yakuza connections to make sure the story doesn't get out. When the incidents occurred for the third year in a row, there were some third-rate magazines that sniffed out the story and ran issues full of gossip columns about Hinamizawa. Fearing that the region would develop a negative stigma, they negotiated with the prefecture and the police. Since last year, it became a big conspiracy, where no information about the incidents was allowed to be leaked to the media. Convenient. This story was unbelievable. People died, and yet they don't publicize it and deal with everything in secret. I guess neither of them had any families! They're gonna have to know one way or another. そんなバカな話があってたまるか。けっちゃん。私以前に親城様のたたりは村人が起こしてるかもしれないって言いましたよね。つまりそういうことなんです。この日南沢では毎年渡流しの夜にお城様のたたりということにして誰かを殺しても
He confessed that he thought Oyashiro-sama's curse was so interesting he wanted to try it out. The criminal died of an accident while imprisoned, so this incident was essentially resolved as well. That's right. None of the incidents had any relation to another, and each was independently resolved. Copycats. The story Takano-san told me the day before during the setup, now that the curse really had occurred this year, I couldn't just laugh it off. And the worst part is, we're in Japan, so we don't have Second Amendment rights. Mion does, though. My lips had, at some point, become completely dry, and just saying that was difficult. Shion didn't respond. Her silence, however, was the clearest form of confirmation she could give me. I was already regretting having committed such a wrong. Even so, was it really so bad that Tomotake-san and Takano-san deserved such cruel deaths? That's true, and, that's, and then she died. Your parents are gonna hear you. I knew saying so wouldn't solve anything. I could feel myself, my cold self, in the innermost depths of my heart, disgusted at my pointless howling. However, my emotions had broken through the dam and I couldn't stop them anymore. I don't think she didn't want to do this. I thought she was just going to be like, oh, let's watch him make out. Well, playing the blame game, this is going to end well. She thought it would be a romantic first date. Click. Without any warning, the phone cut off with the sound, soft sound of a receiver being slammed down. Yeah! I don't blame her for hanging up on that! Shion was just as terrified as I was. I just said some really self-centered things. My riled-up emotions disappeared as if they'd never existed, and in their place surged waves of deep regret at having run my mouth so irresponsibly. I could try to call out Shion's name from beyond the disconnected phone, but it was too late. What have I... What have I done?! <laughs> Shion was only trying to tell me as much as she could about this thing about to descend upon us. As for me, I could only whine like a child about it. I went to call her back, but then I remembered she lived in Okinomiya. I didn't know her th phone number. Since I had declared to Mion that I hadn't seen Shion last night, I couldn't just call Mion and ask her Shion's phone number. I was too scared. I couldn't even call her back. I was stricken with hopeless regret. I returned the receiver to its stand, and then I simply prayed that Shion would call me back again. Call me, maybe. Please, Shion. Calm down and call me again. I swept up the receiver as though I it wouldn't go through if I had, didn't grab it at that exact moment. Who? <laughs> yes, it is. It was the voice of a girl who clearly wasn't Shion. All my hopes rushed out of me. I went to put the receiver back down, but the caller stopped me hurriedly. I don't think so! 
遅くに申し訳ありませんでした失礼いたします Well, that was a weird call, and it happened right after we hung up. I don't know who that was, but what if Shion tried to call while I was on the phone? I fought bubbling of egotistic anger. Hey, wait. Give it a break, Keiichi Maibara. These are the selfish emotions that made Shion mad at me, aren't they? The more I thought about it, the more I thought about Shion, that Shion had given up hope in the short time since we had our conversation and didn't want to call anymore. Calm yourself, Keiichi Maibara. If Shion does call again, then first apologize in a calmed voice. If you do that, then Shion should understand. However, no matter how long I waited, the phone didn't ring again that night. Um, I don't remember. There are too many names in this game. Maybe I should have written the names down. You are playing Higurashi when they cry. New tips unlocked, scrapbook notes, and the late night phone call. Ooh. Close calls. Form an alliance. Did we form an alliance? I don't think we did. <laughs> that wasn't official. Wait a second, how can Takano still be writing more scrapbook things if she's dead? The significance of Watanagashi. Watanagashi, a festival of hunting for sacrifices and feasting on them. While the festival itself is remarkable, it has come to be considered a form of entertainment as well. Perhaps it was because of the disparity between being both an egregious act and a form of entertainment that the perpetrators began to believe themselves transcendent. However, I found some very interesting literature that appears to raise questions about that explanation. As of most oral traditions, it is not easily swallowed, but it does mention a few things that spark my interest. According to this literature, even the residents of Onigafuji Village felt fear towards this ritual. Women and children would grow pale and tremble, and those of weak constitution would vomit. But it is said that the feast, the dissection, was an obligatory viewing. This is an extremely curious tale. Until now, I'd thought that the residents of Onigafuji Village were fascinated by the Watanagashi ritual. They looked down on those vulgar, barbaric humans, cut them open like f fish, and by eating them, they reaffirmed their own holiness. At least that's what I thought. However, if what the villagers gained from this ritual was not fascination, but fear, then that would suggest the ritual meant in something entirely different. There's the possibility that the executions were meant as warnings, encouraging the villagers to strictly follow religious precepts created by those with power for their own convenience. Onigafuchi Village has been effectively ruled over by three old families called the Three Families. Without investigating the Three Families, I probably won't get any closer to the truth of Onigafuchi Village. Okay, so this is still in the past before we broke into the shed. Okay. From the scrapbook part 7. The Three Families. The Three Families refers to the three old families who effectively came to rule Onigafuchi Village. To break it down, there was the Kimiyoshi family, that's the girl who called, the Fur Furude family, Rika, and the Sonazaki family, Mio and Shion, and each of them still exists today. Though they don't have as much control as they did in the remote past, they still hold considerable influence today. The three families are considered by legend to be those in whom the blood of the swamp demons runs the thickest. The Kimiyoshi family. The Kimiyoshi family appears to have held great power as the head of the three families, but it doesn't have that kind of leadership today. The current mayor of the village, Kichiru Kimiyoshi, is from this family. The fact that members of the Kimiyoshi family are elected as mayor every generation is thought to be a remnant of the old sister. Of course, as no rival candidates appear, it doesn't change the fact that the Kimiyoshi family holds the mayor mayoral office even though popular elections in the po even through popular elections in the post-war era. The Furude family. The center of the village's faith since ancient times, the Furude clan has guarded the sole shrine dedicated to Oyashiro-sama. They were worshipped as the only people to represent the voice of Oyoshiro-sama for a long time, but the family branched off after the war and lost most of its power. It now consists of only the main house, and now I think only Rika. The main house, as well, presently consists of only one daughter, Fur Rika Furude, so the lineage may end in this generation. Yeah, yeah unless she's got kid, unless she has kids in the future. 
There is apparently an old tradition of honoring females of the Furude family, so the only daughter, Rika, is the subject of much respect among the elderly of the village. Oh, that's why. I thought they just thought she was Uwu Kawaii, the Sonazaki family. It's said that this family had a certain police-like role of protecting the religious precepts of Onigafuchi Village. Of the three families, their relatively weak position can be seen from me putting them the here last. Of course, today, the Sonazaki family is flourishing, and the state of affairs among the three families has completely reversed. Even now, one could say that they are in control of Hinamizawa. The three families conferring with each other is similar to the old way. The current head of the Sonazaki family, Oriol, essentially decides all of the goings-on in the village by herself. Is that Mion's grandma? I would assume so. Grandma Oreo. Grandma Oreo. <laughs> Grandma Oreo decides what, who can do what. Late night phone call. <laughs> Whose phone call? And what day? Old man Kimiyoshi. Yes. <laughs> Why is he saying that? I thought it was like his granddaughter was saying that, or like his daughter. Why? Is he, my, I was wondering if my dad was visiting you. What is going on here? Yes, yes. Yes. それでは失礼いたします。ごめんください。どうだ。ダメ。参ったな。どんなに熱中しても電話くらいはしてくれる人なんだけれどな。以後の人の家は全部電話したんでしょ。はい。君よしです。その先です。どうです。村長さんは見